Picasso said, all children are born artists. I'd like to humbly add that all children are also born entrepreneurs. Imagine a seven-year-old girl coming home from school every day, crying, frustrated. As parents, you'd be very, very worried. No one knew what was wrong with this child. Well, that girl was me. My parents were worried, and they went to school, and the decision was to bump me up a year, because they said I was bored. What they didn't realize is I was probably just not interested in what they had to say. Growing up, my parents were always proud, bragging about how I was at school. My grades were never anything great. I was a good student, but I was nothing extraordinary. I got awards, but they were always for things like drama, music, arts, things that I loved. I later got into a great university. I didn't get good grades. I actually failed in my first year, and I struggled to get back to school. I didn't know how I was going to tell my parents that all their dreams were about to get shattered. Eventually, I got back to university. In my final year, I was so depressed, I was seeing the university counselor because I absolutely hated what I was doing. Everyone seemed to think I'd be okay, though. Everyone seemed to say she'd be okay, and I didn't understand why. My confidence was shook, and I didn't get it. Now that I'm a mother, now I understand. Now I understand the difference between books and an education. Now I understand the difference between doing something because we have to and doing something that you love. Now I understand the difference between studying for an exam and learning. And I look at my two girls and I see two very different personalities. I see two girls with passion every time they do something they love. I see two girls with a glimmer of hope in their eyes every time they do something that they think is what they love. So I decided I was going to take the world of education and change it. And after working for 15 years with entrepreneurs and mentoring them and volunteering, I decided to set up a platform for entrepreneurship education for children in the Middle East. Why entrepreneurship? Well, I'm going to just define entrepreneurship for a second. On the outside, entrepreneurship is the willingness and desire to set up a business and do something that you're going to get a profit from, blah, blah, blah. But on a much deeper level, entrepreneurship is resilience. Entrepreneurship is creativity. Entrepreneurship is innovation. Entrepreneurship is empathy. Because if you want to be an entrepreneur, it's not about the business. It's about everything that goes around it. And if we want our children to be ready for the future, then this is actually our only hope to instill an entrepreneurial spirit in children today. And for education to truly prepare children, what we need is to be able to give them this entrepreneurial spirit, skills, and basic financial literacy. Because if we're going to look at children today and expect them to survive in a world where automation and artificial intelligence and nine-to-five jobs are only going to get more and more scarce, then we're just setting them up for absolute failure. So I'm going to give you two sides of the same coin. First of all, there's the economic case, and then there's the human side. And the economic case comes to you from the World Bank. Over 20% of unemployment rates in the Middle East. Over 25% if you include North Africa. And a stunning 30% of the unemployed, well, they're actually university graduates. And if you think about that, and think about the public and the private sector, and what they're capable of doing, you'll know that it's actually only going to get worse with time. But then there's the human side. And the human side says that children need to understand the basics of what it's like to run a business. And I don't mean a business of multi-million dollars. I'm talking about a lemonade stand and the challenges it takes to make your lemonade in time and be able to sell it. You need to have interpersonal skills. 
You need to be able to communicate with people. And most of all, you need to be able to deal with challenges. And you can't start at university. You need to start as young as seven years old. And my daughters are around that age now. They go to work with their father and I sometimes, and they'll see what it's like to run a business. They'll see the stresses, they'll see the happy times. But most of all, what this instills in them is they see that they want to be a part of it. They want to earn. They want to be creative. They want to do something. Well, my oldest daughter, she wants to be a YouTuber. And the younger one wants to be a rock star. Next week, this all might change, but that's what it is now. And unlike my parents and parents of our generation, we're not as concerned about their academic performance as we are with the skills that they learn. And those skills, whatever they decide to do, that's what's going to carry them forward. Last summer, I spent a lot of time at refugee camps in Jordan. I was working in a camp in the north of Jordan. You might have heard of it, the Gaza Jarash Refugee Camp. They have dire situations. The educational system is close to non-existent. They have no public services. This is the poorest refugee camp. There was no hope, and everyone thought I was absolutely mad if I thought that I was going to work with these kids and teach them about this foreign concept of entrepreneurship. On the first day, the kids were all rowdy. Everyone was against me. Everyone was looking at me like I was just a strange person coming from an alternate universe. On the second day, the children were lining up two hours before the workshop started. On the second day, children were there at 7 a.m. waiting to do what we heard started. And what was interesting was that the mothers were overcome with joy because their children were actually positive that day. They were off the streets and they were actually working on their business plans, their ideas. And the entrepreneurial spirit was within them already. I didn't have to do anything. I just had to show them a path. There were boys working alongside girls. Gender was no longer an issue. There were girls that were operating as CEOs of companies. At first, the boys were a little skeptical. But by the end, they said, you know what? She was actually better at the job than I was. We had boys working with their fathers after hours. And one of the boys actually told his father, do you know why you're not making enough money? And he said, you're not calculating the cost of gas when you're going to and from your plumbing clients. And I'm pretty sure that made the father happy. The mothers were overcome with joy. And it was all already there. A one-day workshop is not going to change the world. But the first day changed them for the rest of the summer. And we saw the change as they continued. Looking back at my days at school, we were given dates, formulas, facts, all the time. And I memorized them and I regurgitated them at tests. Today, if you ask me, I'd be extremely hard pressed to remember any of it. I can barely count and put three numbers together. But I'm not saying that that's not important. Do I want my children to learn about science, history, and math? Of course. But that's not all. It's like asking an adult to make a mission style meal when they can't even make an omelet. Our role is to teach children how to think and not what to think. And that's where the entrepreneurial spirit comes in. Because if we're able to give children the skills, if we're able to give children the tools beyond the facts, beyond the numbers, and what to do with them, then we'd be able to set them up for a future that waits for them. I'm going to give you an example of an awesome, awesome boy, Julius. So he came into one of our workshops. He was 11 years old. On the first day, I thought, this kid, he's just so quiet. But he was taking in information better than any of us ever could. By the end of the workshop, Julius came to me and gave me a link. And he said, 
can you please check this out? So I did. The link was for a barber shop. What he'd done is he'd gone and created a website for his barber. And he went to his barber and said, I'm going to give you this website for free if you will cut my hair for free for a year. The barber agreed. And I think Julius now has a lifetime of haircuts ready and available to him. But this is the, this is the key. They're there. They're resilient. They have it in them. They are ready and willing to learn. They're sponges. And when we're giving them all this information and we're just reinforcing the mold of nine to five jobs, study, exams, pass, graduate, and get a job. And our parents had always said, be a banker, be a lawyer, be a doctor. And of course, there's nothing wrong with that. But if we're able to go beyond these skills, if we're able to look at teamwork, empathy, self-confidence, community, and failure, then we're giving children a better chance in the future. And this is something that's very much overlooked today. Teamwork. Ask any leader today, and they will attribute most of their success to their amazing team that works behind closed doors. And teamwork goes way beyond school projects. Teamwork is about building a sense of community. Teamwork is about de developing empathy. Teamwork is about giving back to your community. And if we take our community today and want it to be a progressive one, then we need to be spending a bit more time building teamwork skills. After having gone to, this, to these refugee camps all summer, my daughters, they saw me come back and say stories and, you know, ah, oh, you know, so-and-so did this. And my oldest daughter came to me and said, Mama, um, school is going to start in a few weeks. Can we get backpacks and school supplies for the kids? So of course. So they raised money, earned some money, earned some money from me primarily, but earned some money. And at the end of the summer, we went and we bought backpacks and school supplies and we took them to the camps. And the impact that this had on my daughter was just incredible. So I looked at her and I said, Mama, do you know the backpack you asked for for school this year? And she said, yes. That backpack costs more than all 30 of these. What do you think? And she said, you know what, Mama, I think I'll use my backpack from last year, this year. It's actually perfectly fine. And that's the feeling that we want children to have if we want to build a progressive society. And education is not there to teach people numbers because we can all Google things today. Education is here to teach you and prepare you for the future. And I'm going to talk about a dreaded word, failure. Having failed at university, having failed in triathlons a million times and having failed in mountains and all that stuff, I'm no stranger to failure. And we grew up thinking that failure is final. And failure is the opposite of success. You fail an exam, you're going to flunk out of school, and you're never going to go back. You fail at your sales target, you're going to get uh, fired from your job, and you're going to be unemployed. Couple that with the stigma of failure in our culture, and there is this dark gray cloud hanging above us. I believe Failure is not getting back up. Failure is not learning from our mistakes. And if I didn't get back up every single morning after having failed time after time, then I would have lost hope, I would have not been optimistic, and I would stop believing that every day is a new day. And if we're able to work with children and give them the understanding of what failure is and how to come out of it and how to learn from it, then that's how we're preparing children for the future that waits. And the earlier we instill these thoughts in our children, the more likely we are to nurture their entrepreneurial spirit, no matter what path they take. Am I saying everyone is going to be an entrepreneur? Absolutely not. They can go down one path, and the path can be to be a doctor or an HR manager. But if you have innovation, and if you're able to make something out of that and be different, then you have the entrepreneurial spirit. If you choose to go down the entrepreneurial path, then of course 
You need those skills because you're going to be going through hurdles every single day. And I think all children have the right and should be afforded the opportunity to hone those skills and nurture those, those skills. Because I've seen firsthand from my experience that they all have it in them. And all they need is someone that's going to bring it out of them. If everything I've said today makes any sense whatsoever, I'm going to ask you to join me in giving children this opportunity to take control of their lives and to give themselves the future that they are entitled to today. Thank you.